In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the general improvements brought to Krita in the last four releases. That is to say, up to the current version, 2.9.9. We are going to look at UI improvements, shortcuts, the two new assistants, and more. Let's get started. We are going to first focus on the user interface. The toolbox now contains new, better looking icons. By default, each icon measures 16 by 16 pixels. You can resize them by right-clicking inside of the toolbox. If you have a high DPI display, like many tablets today, you can increase the icon size to make them bigger. You can also reduce their size anytime down to 12 by 12 or 14 by 14 pixels. Next up is the tool options docker, one we use a lot. It can now be put in the toolbar at the top of the screen right to the left of the brush settings icon. In order to get it there, you have to go to the settings menu and then to configure Krita. The option lies in the general category under the tools tab. Select the in toolbar option to turn the options docker into a drop down panel. You have to restart Krita for the change to take effect. If you're on Windows, be sure to save your document before you do that as there's a bug right now. Krita closes upon validating the change. When the tool options sit in the toolbar, you can call them up with the backward slash key. You can also right click on the panel to detach it from the toolbar. However, right now on my Windows computer, the panel gets locked down into the top left corner of the screen. That's another bug that should get fixed soon. Until then, I prefer to keep the tool option as a docker sitting as close as possible to my mouse on the canvas but having this panel in the toolbar is a good way to keep your interface clean. For users who need to dive into color management, a nice browser made by Wolfera was added to navigate ICC profiles. Maybe you don't know what those are for. To put things simply, every device like your computer screen or a printer renders colors differently. Computer screens typically can show far less colors than we can see with our eyes. ICC color profiles change the way colors are calculated in Krita and how they are converted to a reference color space called XYZ. From that generic representation of colors, another device can then convert your paintings to its own color model and try to preserve the original. Anyway, in the color space browser, the triangles you can see represent the range of colors a given profile can produce and the whole shoe shape corresponds to all of the colors we human beings can see. If you are painting for the web and video games, you won't need to bother too much with color management, as most screens can render a limited set of colors. However, I'm nothing like an expert when it comes to color management, so if you want to understand it better, I invite you to head up to the Krita documentation. Wolfera included new links at the bottom of the page. The links in the description. On a side note, a variety of performance improvements were made in Krita. The most noticeable one is on filter layers. You can now add a filter on top of your layer stack or within a group and keep painting below it without losing too much performances. Okay, let us now talk about general workflow and tool improvements. You don't have to use the selection action modes anymore in Krita's latest version. You can now use modifier keys to add, subtract or intersect selections. In the default replace selection mode, keep the shift key down to add to your selection, the alt key to subtract to your selection, and both the shift and alt keys down together to intersect selections. On a similar note, when you are tracing a path with the Bezier selection tool or the Bezier drawing tool, you can right click to remove the previous point. And a quick tip, you can still press escape to cancel the whole shape. Along with selections, the transforms also got some love. Kretao now allows you to edit your last transform. To do so, you just have to click on the canvas after you applied a transform. Thanks to that, you can look at the result of a deformation and go back and tweak it if you're not pleased with the result. This is especially useful with the warp, cage transform and liquify functions. Next, we have the RGB color curve. This is an addition to the RGB curves filter, which was assigned to the Ctrl M keyboard shortcut. This filter allows you to strengthen or weaken your images colors. It is great to add contrast to a picture quickly while retaining full control of the result. Extra tip, in Krita you can use this filter to change the lightness of your image. 
you have to go in the drop down menu and pick the lightness option. That way, you can make your selection lighter or darker while Krita preserves your colors. You can now merge multiple layers together with the Ctrl E key combination. When you have only one layer selected, this will merge the layer with the one below it. When you have multiple layers selected, it will merge them together. Some new default shortcuts were also added. You can now press Ctrl Alt I to scale an image, Ctrl Alt C to resize the canvas, Ctrl G to create a layer group, and Shift F6 to feather your selection. I've got a few more interesting new features for you. First, there are two new drawing assistants. One allows you to draw concentric ellipses, and the other one will help you with curvilinear perspective. To draw a concentric ellipse assistant, you have to select the assistant tool, go to the tool options and select concentric ellipse from the drop down menu. Then you can define your assistance with three clicks on the canvas. The first two clicks define the length of the ellipse, its radius, and the third one defines its tilt or width. The fisheye assistant is designed to help you draw curves that converge to two vanishing points. When the assistant tool is selected, you have to go to the tool options docker and pick fisheye point from the drop down menu. Click on the canvas to define the first vanishing point. Click a second time to define the second vanishing point and a third time to define the width of the ellipse your curves will fit in. If you want to get proper five points perspective, there's a trick for you. You have to create two superposed fisheye assistants and one has to be rotated 90 degrees compared to the other. Then, when you select the brush tool, go to the options and ensure that snap single is checked. That way, if you draw a vertical stroke, the brush will snap to the vertical fisheye assistant. And if you draw a horizontal line, it will snap to the horizontal assistant. There's a new brush engine called Tangent Normal, made by Wolfra. It allows you to draw artistic tangent normal maps using your pen tablet's tilt. Not only that, with it, you can also draw UV coordinate maps for deformation shaders and other 3D materials. The latter is a great tool for technical artists. We'll talk more about it in a dedicated video next week. And we are wrapping up this overview with the wraparound mode. You can toggle this mode on or off using the W key. Before, you could paint anywhere on the canvas, on any copy of your document. But you couldn't fill or sample colors. Well, now you can. Just control click anywhere to grab a color from the canvas. And you can fill from any position as well. That's it for now. I hope you liked the tutorial. If you want to learn more about Krita's tools, if you want to become a better game artist, I have something for you. I'm working on a training series called Game Art Quest. In this Udemy series, I will show you how to produce professional-grade assets for 2D games. It's on Kickstarter right now and it's almost founded. Please check it out. That said, I want to thank you all for watching. Be creative, have fun, until next time.